Hello. <laughs> Hello. And welcome to another edition of Science Isn't Dull. Now, this week, we're looking at a subject which concerns us all, the environment. Did you know that every year we destroy an area of rainforest the size of Belgium? Why not just destroy Belgium? <laughs> Surely this would be much better for the environment. Now, we all know the basic problem, the greenhouse effect. Pollution causes carbon dioxide which gets trapped in the Earth's atmosphere, like... Like a fart under a duvet. <laughs> That's an excellent example, Boris. <laughs> this trapped carbon dioxide is causing global warming. Now, one consequence of global warming will be that sea levels will rise, causing rivers to overflow. Now, this may prove a problem for people who have to live or work near rivers. Good evening. And tonight on the South Park Show, I'll be trying to change the title of the programme to the Top of the Hill Show. <laughs> The greenhouse effect is also causing changes to our climate. That's right. And to explain what these new weather conditions are, weather forecasters may have to invent some new symbols. Hello, Will. Here on today's channel, you can see sun up in Scotland, rain in the north, and down in the south, acid rain. <laughs> For our generation, it may be too late to save the environment. But we must ensure that our children don't make the same mistakes. We should be teaching them about the environment, starting right from the nursery, teaching them rhymes like... Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle right up to his middle and said, Why is this water taking all the skin off my legs? <laughs> Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Sheep drowned in morning, global warming. <laughs> Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? It doesn't. <laughs> I'm not allowed to use my sprinkler. <laughs> of course, there are things that we all can do to try and help. Yes, you can use an ecological washing powder. It doesn't contain phosphates, it doesn't contain whiteners, it doesn't get your clothes clean. <laughs> but really, to solve these problems, all we need is more scientists like us. Yes, if you'd like to become a scientist, there are three sciences that you can learn at school. First, there's physics. Physics is either accelerating subatomic particles to near light speeds in an attempt to discover the ultimate origins of the universe, or it's melting some ice in a bucket. <laughs> Then there's biology, which is an easier science because biology exams are nearly always multiple choice. And multiple choice tests are easy, since out of the four possible answers, one is always very obviously wrong. Questions like, what is the name of the fluid that lubricates the joint at the elbow? Is it A, synoptic fluid, B, synovial fluid, C, hemiopteric fluid, or D, Jeff Hurst in the 1966 world? <laughs> Biology, of course, also means sex education. For some reason, teachers think it's good for children to have to watch frogs bonking. But most children have already seen frogs bonking in those late-night subtitled films on Channel 4. <laughs> of all at school is undoubtedly chemistry because you have to do experiments the important thing with a chemistry practical is that you must always remember to write down what was supposed to happen and not what actually did happen <laughs> you must write reports like this object of experiment to react potassium permanganate with manganese sulfide the substances were placed in the test tube and heated over a Bunsen burner and an oxidized sublimated solution was produced if you'd been absolutely honest you would have written this Object of experiment, mix up the mauve stuff with the smelly yellow stuff. <laughs> the mauve stuff was put in a test tube and held over a burny thing. The test tube broke. <laughs> we tried again and nothing happened, so we poured it on the desk to see what it would do. The desk disintegrated, half the class are now blinded, and I'm writing this with my one remaining hand. <laughs> so remember, science isn't dull. <laughs>